And he was like, Ez, you are so nasty. I'm going to do, I'm going to be a hard nut. I'm going to not flinch. I'm not going to give them the satisfaction of me being, I was that one girl that like made friends with a lot of the boys in year seven because I did bushcraft with them all. They're like, yep. You stick out like a sore thumb. You're definitely British. You can speak to me in Spanish as much as you like, but I'm just going to speak back to you in English. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to my podcast, Esme's Country Life, and welcome to season two. We're now in 2024, so happy new year. I feel like season two is what we're going to call it, so yeah, welcome back. I hope you've all had a lovely Christmas. I feel like Christmas feels like ages ago now, like that has been and gone, but I'm going to give you a little update of when I've what I've been up to recently because there's lots happened I've been ill I've been away I've made lots of plans for 2024 so before we get into all of that I just want to say a huge thank you to the sponsor of the podcast Red Post Red Post is an equestrian and country store based in the UK but they also ship all over the world and also I have some very exciting news that they are having a January sale so be sure to head to redpostquestrian.co.uk to get some super good deals but anyway, let's get straight into it. Um, I thought to do like a little recap of Christmas. I know that Christmas has been and gone. I feel like everyone's fed up with Christmas. But like, okay, you've talked about it enough, especially in my industry. I feel like Christmas starts in social media land world basically as soon as Halloween's gone. Like Halloween's gone. It's just like everyone's doing the Christmas content. Everyone's thinking about the Christmas kind of stuff that they need to do. But anyway, um, yeah, I had actually had a really lovely Christmas. It was kind of quiet, actually, because I feel like everyone that I know has been ill over Christmas. Um, Normally I get ill after the London International Hall show just because it's a lot of people all in one place. Um, I would never get ill when I would go just for the day or go as general public. But when you work there and you're there like all the time talking to loads of people for some reason, like it's just kind of like a thing. Everyone always jokes that they get ill after that. Um, So I wasn't ill after that. I was great. I thought loads of people I knew dropping like flies. They were all getting ill. And I thought my immune system it's good, we're there, I'm not going to be ill, especially as when I literally, I think it was, I, when I started the podcast, I got ill so much, I think it was like, I did two episodes, and then I had to have a little break for a week, because I literally lost my voice, I was like, how ironic is this, I start a podcast, and then I physically cannot talk, um, but anyway, so I, I was like, yeah, my immune system, great, anyway, um, my boyfriend got really ill, and of course, I got his illness, um, luckily it wasn't actually too bad, there was like one day where I was just like, in bed he unfortunately was like properly ill like over Christmas day and everything and a lot of his family were ill so normally like I see his family and all his grandparents they were all like nah we're just gonna have a have a lovely chill Christmas at home so I didn't really see much of his family saw a lot of my family though which is really lovely um but yeah also I was properly ill on Christmas Day with real bad cramps, so that wasn't good either. So, um, yeah, it definitely was a a Christmas of illnesses. Um, There's even more illnesses to come, so don't worry. (laughs) We'll talk about that when it comes to the holiday. Um, But, uh, yeah, moving on. Had a really lovely Christmas for the people that did see, and it was just, like, a nice little chilled one this year. Um, Also, um, me and my boyfriend, we do this thing. You know, like, there's that really weird period between Christmas and New Year where nobody knows what day it is, what time it is, what's going on. Like everyone just chills, especially as um, he like runs a business. So their business closes for that time of year. So it's the one time where we both like, we kind of like just joke that we become kids again in that time period because we have like, well, obviously we have like, he has Ruby to look after and I have the horses. So we still have some responsibility, but it's a time where we can literally just chill out, turn our brains off. Um, we'll do things that like we did as kids. Like, so we both like played a lot of video games and things like that. Things that we wouldn't like, just like have time to do nowadays because you know, when you get older, you, it just feels like life gets busier and busier, but there we go. Um, cannot complain. Um, but yeah, so we were both like properly ill, just in bed, snotty, not good <laughs> just what we watched loads of like disney pixar films as well i think we literally watched like all three car cars films so there we go if you wanted to know what i did in that period that's what we did um and then we also went away so we had a little bit of a holiday again like it's a really perfect time for us to go away and actually have some time to chill out because both of our jobs were so busy over christmas and then as soon as christmas is done 
again there's like this week where just nothing happens the world closes down it's brilliant i love it um it's just that sort of time where you can just sit and rot basically and not feel bad about it because you're not in january where everyone's like okay new year's resolutions let's go to the gym like all that kind of you know stuff that people do so we were like let's just have a chill time so we decided to go on holiday i went away with his parents and also his brother and his brother's girlfriend so there were six of us all together but we all flew out at different times because we were staying in this villa and um so i flew out with him his mum and his dad his brother flew out on an earlier flight because i think it was like a cheaper one uh, but that was at like he had to wake up at like 3 a.m um, but it, we all like booked flights at different times because some of us weren't sure if we were going to make it or be able to have time off. Um, his his brother's girlfriend wasn't sure if she was going to have time off work and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, the four of us were flying out and, um, you know, you get to the airport. When I got in the car, I do the normal thing of being like, has everybody got their passports? Because it, that's all that's the only thing you need. If you've got your passport, you can you can you can you can buy things if you don't have it. Like if you forget your socks, forget your pants, forget your toothbrush. They're going to have shops in Spain because that's what we were going to Spain. Um, they're going to have shops where you can buy those things. We're not going to like the North Pole where there's nothing. <laughs> so anyway, um, we got to the airport um, and then his mum got my case out and put it on the ground. And I was like, oh, that's that's my case. And she was like, oh, yeah, it is. And then she went into the back of the boot. She was like, oh, um, wh where's my case? <laughs> And she forgot to put her case in the car. And when I tell you the whole that day, we, we I was actually quite nice. I was like, if that was me, I would cry if I'd forgotten my case. Um, but the boys, they were rinsing her. Like we have a very big like family banter where if something goes wrong, like we laugh about it and that kind of thing. So we were all like cracking jokes. Um, like even just little things like we're going through passports, going through um, what's called air traffic control kind of thing you know where you have to get all your liquids out and go through the x-ray machine and that kind of thing we were like oh you're gonna go through really quick you don't even have a case with you so we all brought like carry-ons because nowadays it is so pricey to bring a full-sized case actually to be fair my boyfriend my boyfriend brought a full-size case because he we were actually going skiing on this trip so he brought all this ski stuff I don't have ski stuff so I was I actually was so proud of myself I packed very very light for a girl as well because us girls were known for overpacking um you know very stereotypical <laughs> but um I had a small carry-on suitcase and a tote bag and that was it and I managed to fit everything for a week in that so I was quite chuffed with myself I was very proud of myself I feel like I'm, I'm quite good at packing I remember when um we went I went to a work trip to Australia back in 2019 for three weeks I think it was I think it was just under three weeks I literally packed the night before I feel like a trip that big when you're literally going across the other side of the world, most people will like be packing for a month, make sure they get everything. I'm just like, if I pack it all at once, then I won't forget something. Because if I pack like, you know, over a week or over two weeks, then, you know, there might be things that I need in that suitcase and then I'll take it out and then I'll forget to put it back in again. I'm just like a night before, get everything done, bish, bash, bosh. So, um, what was I even talking about? Oh yeah, passports. I didn't steal someone's laptop this time, like my trip to Italy that I was talking about. So um, that was all good. Um, luckily, um, she did have some clothes at the villa. So that was all good. So anyway, we um, arrived, got in the car, that kind of thing. And then we got a vent because we'd been rinsing the poor girl for, for getting her suitcase. Then uh, my boyfriend's brother rang being like, hey guys, I've locked myself out. <laughs> so we were rinsing him for getting locked out. In all fairness, he didn't realise it was one of those doors where if you shut the door, it locks itself. So he was, you know, he got there before us all. We were like, this is going to be great. He's going to like do all the shopping for us and put all the food in the villa. He's going to give it a bit of a tidy and a bit of a clean, you know, get everything ready for us. Well, we thought, oh, we finessed this. We're just going to get him to do all the work. We're going to arrive. It's going to be perfect. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, before he even got all the shopping in, he accidentally shut the door, locked the key, the key was inside the villa, so that was all shut up, and he was like, oh, I'm locked out, so he went off, had some lunch, he didn't have to do any of the, the work of, like, getting everything put together, but no, it was all fine, we arrived, we had a great time, it was like, um, if you want to know where we were, well, around where we were staying, for any of my Spanish followers, um, we were staying in 
a play- little place. Well, we flew from Mad- Malaga Airport and then we were kind of like up in the mountains. So it was probably about a 40 minute drive up into the mountains. It had some really beautiful views. But yeah, we had an absolutely lovely time. Again, we just had like a real good chill out. I read a lot of my books as well that I've brought along with me, which I, I feel like I've got into a bit of a reading slump. You know, where you go through, I think it's just because I've been so busy in November, do- November, December doing all the like, worky kind of bits and bobs that I just haven't had haven't really had a time to just sit down and read a book so that was really lovely and also like we were there like over New Year's so weather wise in Spain I feel like all the Spanish they were out there with like puffer coats on like jackets that kind of thing and I was out there in like a floral dress skirt to be fair the weather was probably about I think the highest the we- the temperature got was 22 degrees C which I would say as a British gal, it's hot, it's warm, especially. Um, I had a little lounge on the sunbed. Didn't have to worry about getting burnt too much though because it is literally like January, December. So it wasn't like that. So that was quite nice. Had a little relax in my book. Also went in the pool, even though the pool was what, like 18 degrees, 16 or 18 degrees, which um, in water is very cold. But to be fair, I am such like a water baby. I love swimming in water like as a kid always did that like, I remember swimming in the sea on like an Easter Sunday in the British sea as well like freezing in my pants and t-shirt when I was about six no I was a bit older than that I don't think my mum would have let me swim in the sea when I was six on my own I think I was about seven or eight I think I was about eight and I loved it like if there was water I'm getting in it. So there we go. Had a lovely time. Did some nice little workouts because it was on such a big hill. Um, I literally just like was power walking up and down the hill, seeing all the views, going for a little walk. So that was really lovely. I'm um, trying to think of what we really did. Oh yeah, the first day we went to the shopping mall. And when I tell you, I had so much fun in the shopping mall because as I say before, be- living in the countryside, I don't really like get out that often <laughs> to like cities or towns where there are big shopping malls. So when I shop, I've said this before, I go all out because I don't really like ordering stuff online because I always find a lot of the time it's the quality is either way worse than you think or it doesn't fit right. Like I am that person that will try every item of clothing on um, before they buy it because I feel like if an item of clothing just doesn't fit you right, it's just not going to look good, is it? So anyway, did a little bit of shopping with my boyfriend's mum while my boyfriend and his dad went and did some golf. Um, so we had a lovely time in the shopping centre. Um, also, do you know what was really fun? I got to speak Spanish. Now, this doesn't sound that exciting, but I did Spanish GCSE got an A star as well so you know not to brag or anything one of my regrets is I kind of wish I did Spanish A level because I really enjoyed Spanish I loved my Spanish teacher my Spanish teacher definitely isn't listening to this but um if you're listening you're one of my favorite teachers (laughs) anyway I really enjoyed it but I decided that I wanted to do chemistry A level instead because that's when I was interested in doing either vet physio or being a vet or that kind of thing obviously um I'm now a YouTuber so I went for a very different career path but I feel like that's like that's life sometimes you think you're gonna go down one route and actually different route opens up but anyway (laughs) um but I really enjoyed Spanish that was actually like I remember a few times when I was doing my Spanish GCSE I actually like dreamt in Spanish or was talking to someone in Spanish so um I have forgotten quite a lot of it but I definitely knew enough to kind of not like have a proper like full-on conversation with someone but if someone was talking to me I feel like with languages, I can understand things a lot better than speaking back, or I can like read things well as well. So there we go. But anyway, it was great because obviously it was the off season and where we were, it wasn't like a really touristy area because normally when when you like go on your summer holiday to Spain or that kind of thing, all of the waiters and waitresses or people in shops, they're like, yep, yeah, you stick out like a sore thumb. You're definitely British. You can speak to me in Spanish as much as you like, but I'm just going to speak back to you in English. So there we go. Um, so I was really excited because I got to speak to everyone in Spanish and a lot of people thought I was Spanish, which definitely do not look Spanish. I am so pale and pasty and never see the sun, but there we go. Um, but yeah, I, um, there were ladies that would talk to me like when I went into the changing rooms and they would ask me in Spanish. I wouldn't be able to say what they said, but they would ask me, you know, a lot of the time you would kind of know what people were saying to you um but they'll ask me like how many items of clothing you have and I was like I know my numbers um I know that's I said all my numbers in Spanish I felt very proud of myself and then when it came to paying they were just speaking to me in Spanish and they were asking do you want a bag and I was like yep I'll have a bag please and yeah did it all in Spanish so I was quite proud of myself it was great I was like 
because my school was very much like into languages. We did, um, when you were in year seven, when you first started secondary school, when you were what, like 11, um, you would do French, Spanish and German. And then the one that you were weakest at, you would drop in year eight. Or if you were really good, you could do all three. But I was like, oh, doing three languages, it's probably gonna be a bit confusing. So I did French and Spanish because I was like, they're the countries that I'm probably gonna go to most. Um, When actually, ironically, I'd probably go to, I was gonna say I'd probably go to Germany the most because, you know, I do a lot of horse shows out there, work out there with Germans and that kind of thing. So actually probably would have been good. I mean, when I do go to Germany, I feel like that's one, one thing that I try and be good at when I go to a foreign country is like when you go into I know that like a lot of people speak English but I hate being that English person that's like sorry I do not speak your language like even just learning how to say like please or thank you or um even in their language being like sorry I have I'm really bad at your language I speak English like that kind of thing I just feel like it's just really polite even if people do speak back to you in English um but anyway so I was great yeah I had a great time also one thing I didn't realize I don't know if it's just the UK that's really expensive but the clothes out there was so much cheaper than in the UK um so that was that was great I had a great time also I feel like shopping in a different country is so much fun because often they have shops that you don't have in the UK and then when you come home like everyone's like, oh, where's that top from? We were like, oh, got it when I was on. <laughs> it just sounds cool, doesn't it? But I was meaning more like, you know, like some people, like they, everyone like is like, oh, I know where that top's from. I've seen it in that shop for that kind of thing. Especially like really like mass produced clothing. So it's you, you get something that not everyone at home has, which I always find quite fun. And then you have a little keepsake from when you're on holidays. So um, I bought some, I bought a nice dress and bought some jeans as well because I feel like I've got to stage where a lot of my jeans starting to get really worn out now like I've had these pairs of jeans for what like four or five years now I feel like I've got to the stage you know when you like kind of like stop growing when you're when you're a girl you kind of like grow upwards and then you kind of grow outwards when you kind of become a woman that sounds really weird but you know what I mean so um I feel like I've got a lot of clothing that I've had since I was what 18 not 17 I don't know. So I had this pair of jeans that I wore for to the death. Like they had a hole in the crotch. That's probably a bit TMI. But I feel like it does happen sometimes, you know. I'd always used to get that with old pairs of like jobbers as well. Um, anyway, moving <laughs> moving on. Um, so yeah, I had a great time shopping. Um, went to um, this place. I'm definitely going to butcher the name of this. We went to, I think it's called Frigliana. Um, so that was really, really pretty. Went for a little walk around this, basically this really cute little Spanish town that had like little alleyways and cobblestone streets and all the doors. It made me so happy. All the doors were like painted either like a teal blue or a um, dark blue. And it was, just, it was just very, very pretty. It almost, I know it wasn't, it's not like Greece or anything like that, but it did look a little bit like, you know, Mamma Mia kind of, Mamma Mia kind of houses, you know, so that was really pretty. Obviously got some cute pics there, went for a little walk around. Oh yeah, but also forgot to say, my poor boyfriend got food poisoning. This is the third time he has got food poisoning on holiday together. I feel like it was just it was awful. So I felt so bad for him. So we did have one day just chilling at home where I just read a lot of my book and I could didn't complain I had a great time just lounging around um but anyway luckily he got better in time for skiing now this probably sounds very contrasty because I was literally like walking around in a skirt and shorts and that kind of thing in the heat it was lovely and then we went skiing and you might be like Esme how can you literally be like in the heat and then skiing in the same place so I felt like it was the perfect balance of like activity chilling that kind of thing because where we were staying it was obviously a little bit up the mountain so we had about an hour and a half two hour drive to the top of the mountain where they had snow. So we did skiing. Um, if you have listened to my um, podcast where I talked about my skiing experiences <laughs> in Dubai, um, you'll know what my skiing ability is, but I'll give, give, give you a little bit of a summary. So um, I actually used to do skiing every other week at school when I was about, I want to say 12, 13. I want to say 13. Um, Because my school did this thing called extracurricular. I don't know if most schools do this or not. Um, But from the ages of, I think, year seven to year nine, you did extracurricular. So before you kind of started doing all your GCSEs, important exams, that kind of stuff. Um, So it was really, really cool. You basically got to pick an activity. You'd have like a list of activity each activities each term of what you got to do so I remember when I was in year seven I can't remember if I've told the story or not but I um decided you know what I really want to do bushcraft if you don't know what that is basically it was going out 
into the woods with all your classmates and you would learn to do things like starting a fire in the wild, you know, um, making dens and cooking hot chocolate on the fire. I don't know, just like cool stuff like that. We played like, played, like manhunt in the forest, like games like that. Um, and I was obviously the only girl that picked that. And I remember my teacher coming up to me like, Esme, you are the only girl that has picked bushcraft are you sure you want to do that and I was like yes you know I'm such a crunchy kid that was actually my childhood like playing in forests so I was like yeah that is what I want to do so I was that one girl that like made friends with a lot of the boys in year seven because I did bushcraft with them all so there we go um but anyway I'm trying to think of other activities that I did, I did trampolining in year nine I love that that was really good fun there was this like kind of adventure park near where I lived so a lot of the time I would go to that adventure park because it meant that my dad could pick me up afterwards and I wouldn't have to go all the way back to school again on the minibus. So I did that. That was really good fun. Um, what other? Th I'm trying to think of other things that I did. Pottery painting. That was really cute. I did that around Christmas as well. So we painted loads of cute Christmassy things too. Um, but yeah, they're the sort of activities. That they, did. they also had like dance and Zumba and tennis and other things like that. So basically it would kind of, you know, you had something something fun to do I it, I loved it because it was like every Friday it was Friday after lunch and if you had ex extracurricular that day it was like the best I would get so excited for it every week and like after lunch you were like yes even though it wasn't you were still kind of in school it was like yes it's the weekend it just made the weekend feel so much longer and you just got to do a fun activity with your friends so anyway when I was in year eight I thought I'm gonna do skiing as my activity now obviously over here in the UK we do not have snow. So it was a dry slope, but I remember really enjoying it. And one of my biggest regrets is that I didn't go on any school ski trips because I feel like when you're that age as a teenager, it's the perfect age to learn to ski. Obviously there are all these kids up on the mountains that go every week with their parents that are like four and are going down red slopes. And I'm like, oh my goodness, what on earth? <laughs> like there are just all these kids. Like, I was saying to my boyfriend, we're on the slopes. I was like, oh, there's such like a four year old going down there. I'll be fine. And he was like, Ez, they've probably been skiing since they were out of the womb. Like don't get ahead of yourself here, girl. <laughs> so anyway, um, that's one of the things I regret was going on a school ski trip. Cause my school did have ski trips, but none of my friends wanted to go. And to be fair, it was quite pricey. Um, But yeah, I kind of wish I did that because I feel like when you're a teenager, going with all your friends who also don't know how to ski, you can all learn together. Um, so yeah, there we go. Um, but anyway, we decided to go skiing. So it was all of us bar my boyfriend's dad. He was like, I, I, my knees are knackered. I like, I, I'm skiing is not for me. My parents always say that you shouldn't ski unless you're like a, I don't know. They always say you shouldn't ski over the age of like 40, 45, because you just don't bounce like you used to. Your knees aren't as good, that kind of thing. So that's one thing that I really want to try and get into before I get too old. So I really want to do like do some ski seasons, that kind of thing. Um, but anyway, so that so I was like, I'm going all in. I really enjoyed it in Dubai. I really enjoyed it when I was like a teenager on the dry slopes. So when we arrived, because I literally had like nothing and it wasn't like in Dubai where they had like um, the spush, like a little ski jacket and trousers that you could borrow. Like, um, And my boyfriend's brother was like, ah, the girls will be fine just in leggings. They don't need gloves. They don't need anything. And we were all like, no, 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 no. They're going to get frostbite. Like if you fall over and you've got leggings on, you know, like waterproof ski trousers, that's gonna you're gonna be you're gonna get hypothermia it's not gonna be good so anyway bought some ski trousers um we actually went to like lots of different shops that they had kind of at the ski center place it was very very pretty um and guys I, I i decided you know what i really want to do this i'm gonna go all in um so i just tried on these trousers they fit perfectly and i saw they had them in sage green which is one of my favorite colors like a sage minty pastely green and i was like oh my gosh they are so pretty and then i had a matching jacket as well i was like you know what i'm gonna go all in i'm gonna have the matching jacket because then i because to be fair i didn't actually bring a coat with me my boyfriend has one of those like snow hoodie kind of snowboarding hoodie kind of things so i was gonna wear that but i thought you know what i'm gonna go all out I, like this this will last me hopefully for the rest of my life so there we go or the rest of my ski journey <laughs> i don't know if i'm gonna be like 85 going down the slopes you never know though <laughs> maybe on a toboggan um but anyway so um but it was also good because it has like one of those little, like little zips in your ski jacket that you can put your ski pass in so when you go on the slope go on the like what are they called ski escalators that is not the right word no what are they called <laughs> gondola or chairlift when you go on those um 
you don't have to like worry about getting your pass out but also i didn't realize that there's a thing called a snow skirt people that are, are like seasoned skiers are gonna be like esme this is so boring why are you explaining this but to be fair there's a lot of people probably out there that don't ski regularly so um well i i this is new world for me um but there's like a little thing called a snow skirt on like a ski jacket um and so you do like these little poppers up at the bottom so if you fall over you don't get snow up your jacket which i think is genius um how my proper ski so i was there a vision of green, loved it. I was the only one in green as well, which is great because, oh my goodness, when you lose somebody, it is so difficult to find them. Like my, my boyfriend, he has his like, he, luckily his ski helmet's like a little bit easier to find because it's black, but it has like gold bits on, <laughs> which sounds really weird, but it is very cool. Um, And he also like, it, we, he was, I don't know if I can say this one, but he was saying, um, we were all, the, I'll, I'll say it in a polite word, we were all the gear and no idea because um, he was going to say we're a full kit, something or other, if, if you know, you know, um, <laughs> that they say in football. But um, so we were there. I was a vision of green. They, everyone could spot me, which was great. And um, sporting it was a little bit difficult because he, his stuff is like navy and black and blue. So but it was basically just looked black from a distance away. Um, so he was a bit more difficult to spot. Um my boyfriend's mum, though, she was easy to spot. She had a hot pink ski jacket, white salopettes. She was looking the part. Um, so, yeah, that was she was quite easy to spot. And also my boyfriend's brother had bright orange salopettes on or like ski trousers. So he was quite easy to spot as well. Um, it was just my boyfriend. I was like, where is my man? Where has he gone? <laughs> so, um, but no, we had a great time. Went on the baby slopes first. Easy, bash, all good. Did the baby, the baby slopes like twice. I was like, this is boring. I want to go, I want to go on the big ones. My boyfriend's like, no, 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 Esme, I need to look after you. I've promised your parents that you weren't going to die on the slopes or break your neck or that kind of thing. I was like, no, 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 this is too easy. Let's go. I had my confidence up. I was great. Went on all the green slopes. Bam, loved it, so good. And then we just did all the green slopes all the time because my boy, sorry, this is such a long winded way of saying it. My boyfriend's brother's girlfriend, she um, had never been skiing before. Now this is something that else that I would we kind of regret slash would like to do was if you don't know how to ski, please take a ski lesson <laughs> because um, she has yeah, poor bless her. She had, she, she was all right to start with and then she fell over a few times and then she got a bit stressed out and then she got it good again and then she was fine. Um, but, but, but to be fair, um, like she kind of like actually kind of got to almost my level by the end. She did really well in the end. So we, I was just going down the green slopes with her to keep her company, which is fine. And then I was like, you know what? I'm, I really want to go on one a little bit bigger. Now what I should have done, what I should have done was go in like the kind of one stage up. Did I do that? No. I went on, I went up to the top of the mountain. It was only a blue slope though, but I went to the top of the mountain with my boyfriend and my boyfriend's brother. And I was like, woohoo, let's go. I'm excited. What I didn't realize was because the day had gotten a little bit later, it had got so busy. There were all these like pro people snowing about, you know, skiing around on their snowboards or skis. And like, they would go right up behind you. And I got a little bit, not stressed, but you know how you kind of feel like when it's a little bit too busy in a warm up arena, I'm putting this into horsey terms here, where you feel like you need some rear view mirrors or something to be able to see behind you because people come up behind you so fast. And I just, I got a bit distracted by just so many people around me because skiing you know you kind of get in a rhythm you go like side to side to slow down which you know I found out in Dubai the hard way that you don't just go straight down you have to kind of go to side to side to slow yourself down so I was in my rhythm going side to side and then someone just come up behind me and it just freaked me out also the um snow up there wasn't as good um in the sense that as the day went on because they used um obviously they did have some snow up on the mountains but to make it a little bit better they had snow cannons which we saw when we were driving up which looked so cool um but as the day got on obviously the snow got a little bit more icy and not as good um so by the time i did my blue run there was quite a lot of like bumps as well like the first bit was proper steep and I think I just lost my confidence a little bit I was fine like I didn't actually fall over on that bit I was fine I was just going down real slowly you know side to side um people who are proper skiers are going to be like god this is so embarrassing like what is this girl doing 
<laughs> but anyway, so I was fine, you know, I was going down. Also, this is my first ever time skiing with poles before. Before, I've never skied with poles, and I actually, um, I actually fell over. But the reason why I fell over was because I forgot I had my poles with me, and I actually tripped myself up on my pole, which is so embarrassing. Um, but I was fine. But after that, I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna do that again. Like, I'm, I want to have like a few more ski lessons just to get my confidence up. And I feel like I would have been fine if I was the only one there, like in Dubai. I didn't have to worry about anybody else. Um, when I probably shouldn't have worried about everyone else because everyone else is better than me and they would just get out of the way. But um, you'd be like going along, you'd be going along on your little track and then you'd see like a bit of like icy patch or like a little bit of a mound and I'd be like, oh my gosh, I gotta go round it, no. Um, so that wasn't too good. But I had a lovely time. We had a great time. I really want to go again. I want to go on a ski holiday. I, I, I loved it. So I did a little, um, I did a little TikTok to the audio. <laughs> <laughs> you guys probably know it if you've seen it. Oh, I don't want to do the voice because you guys know I'm really bad at accents. But the whole time when I was going down the mountain, I was saying to Sophie, my boy, uh, boyfriend's brother's girlfriend, I was saying to her, um, I'm on my on the mountain with my cousin Wilhelm and he's going to do a big trick. So <laughs> going down, I just started going, yes, Wilhelm, like to her. And we were just like, it was it was funny. We were having a great time. We were goofing around. Um, but also I found out that, because, um, you know, I said before, speak a little bit of Spanish. I did learn that if you shouted Cuadrado really loudly, that people would get out your way. <laughs> so I was like, Sophie, if you get in a panic, just shout Cuadrado and people will move out your way. Cause that means like watch out or like danger, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, had a lovely time skiing that kind of thing. And then um, how much time do we have? Okay, I've got a meeting. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm literally come back from holiday last night doing the podcast and I've got a meeting in nine minutes so I'm going to try and wrap this up quickly but I've got one more really embarrassing funny story to tell you so we've decided you know new year's let's play some games let's have some fun so my boyfriend's mum decided let's make like this little game so what she did was she had a baking tray and then cut out little pieces of paper with numbers on put little numbers in all the baking tray holes and then you'd have to bounce a ping pong ball and it, if it landed on one of the numbers, you'd then have to find these cups that had the numbers on, lift up the cup and see if it was a prize or a dare. Now, I was so happy because I bounced it in first. I got a prize. I got like loads of pennies or money. It was, I don't know how much it was. It was probably like £3.50, but I was gassed. I was so happy. There was some chocolates under others. Um, so the day that my boyfriend had food poisoning where we were just chilling and I was looking after him kind of thing, um, she was like, Esme, can you write some dares for me? So I was like, oh, this could be great. So I wrote what I thought would be safe enough that nobody was going to die, but interesting enough where you really wouldn't want to do it. I didn't realise that her level of dares were going to be things like pretend to be an animal and um, you have to pretend to be an animal until somebody can like guess what the animal was or like do an embarrassing dance move. So my level of dares were a little bit, let's just say a little bit further up than what hers were. So I was wetting myself with laughter because my boyfriend's brother, he, he, he was chatting all this stuff like how he was not going to get any dares anyway. He got one of the dares that I wrote and he opened it up. And when when the first day came, which was like a little bit pathetic, I was like, oh, guys, I think I've underestimated the level of dares on this. I'm really sorry. <laughs> he opened it up. And um, the first one, to be fair, wasn't too bad. The pool was very cold and this was the evening now. And I said, go into the pool waist deep so obviously he went out put on swimming trunks went down into the pool was making such like a little fuss being like oh it's really cold it's really cold like that kind of thing and then and then i was like it'll be so funny if you get the other one because that one's even worse anyway he ended up getting the other one which was my dare and it was um I have, we did, we didn't do Google this before. I didn't realize this is probably a little bit dangerous, but it was, um, to be fair, we didn't make him eat like a whole teaspoon. I said, eat a teaspoon of salt, which apparently is the daily recommended amount of salt for an adult. <laughs> so that was a really horrible one. So it was a little bit under a whole teaspoon. And to be fair, that night we also had a Chinese. So he probably had like so much, so much salt. And he was like, Ez, you are so nasty. <laughs> anyway, ended up eating it, took it like a champ. It was fine, but it was so funny. And then what I didn't realize is my boyfriend's dad, he changed one of the dares and put a dare for me under it. So anyway, I was the last one to get it got it and he was like oh Ez lucky you 
It's a dare. And I didn't realize he had written one even worse. So his was get into the pool neck deep. And I was like, you have got to be joking. I've got a taste of my own medicine here. So anyway, what did I do? Ran to the bedroom, put on my bikini, walked out like a soldier, like a champ. I was like, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do, I'm going to be a hard nut. I'm going to not flinch. I'm not going to give them the satisfaction of me being uncomfortable. So walked straight into the pool, neck deep, stood there for a good 10 seconds, stared them in the face, walked out. I was like, that is how you do it. I am so much braver than you. I made no, no jip. I was no, you know, I wasn't complaining at all. Didn't complain about how cold it was. And I was like, there we go. So anyway, that was my holiday. That was my trip away. Um, I have really got to go now because I've got a meeting. i promise you I'm a professional podcaster he has enough time to do everything but to be fair I've had a lot to talk to you guys about I've had a lot to you know recap on and some funny stories well like I've missed you guys actually this, that sounds really sad but it's been like two weeks since I filmed a podcast episode because obviously I, after, like, I wanted to film everything before Christmas just so I can have a chill out have a rest because I do sometimes get a little bit burnt out so I'm trying to avoid that in 2024 but here we are so anyway thank you so much for listening to the podcast I really hope you enjoyed episode one of season two thank you so much again to Red Post for sponsoring the podcast and go and check out their January sale but anyway thank you for listening and I'll see you all next time bye